What's the weather like? An easy question with a simple enough solution, checking on your phone. Those numbers dictate that you'll need a jacket or not, and they come from the closest weather station, which is the foundation of our forecast. The more weather stations there are, the better our forecast will be, as more of those data points will be filled in that a weather model doesn't have to guess or extrapolate. Too many gaps could lead to a busted forecast down the line, so by adding new weather stations like this one at Sand Hill Elementary, we can better predict the weather. Founded by a grant from DD2 Educational Foundation, this weather station does a lot, as Megan Hatcher, a fourth grade teacher who helped bring this weather station to the school, explains. We teach a weather unit every year in fourth grade, and I really wanted something other than just teaching the standards. I wanted something for my students to have a real world experience and to be able to talk about real world data that's coming right here from the roof of our school. Better yet, the weather station encourages curiosity and engagement in other lessons as well. We use the weather data in science class. It's integrated into our math problem. The students can write weather reports in ELA class, so it's really kind of a cross-curricular activity. All of the real-time weather data that the students use are measured by a collection of instruments on the station. So let's take a quick trip through some of the sensors, starting with the easiest, a thermometer, which, as you guessed it, measures temperature. The humidity is measured by a device called a hygrometer, while the atmospheric pressure is measured by a barometer. These instruments are usually shielded away from view, but the next instrument is not. An antimometer, which measures the strength and direction of the wind. Rounding out the main instruments is a rain gauge, which measures every one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation as the bucket that collected the rain tips over. Wind chill, dew point, and other variables are calculated as well, all of which provide valuable data for weather models to use and for the next generation of STEM students. You can teach from a textbook all day long, but for them to actually know that what we are studying is real world information that is coming right from our school, they're really engaged, they're excited to learn about it, um, they're asking questions that years ago they would have never asked. Questions like what's the weather outside can blossom into a years long interest in science as long as educators like Miss Hatcher incorporate STEM and the physical embodiment of science like a weather station in a young student's education. One, two, three. For this week's Moment of Science, I'm Storm Team 2 meteorologist David Dixon.